I'm here once again today with Bonnie Specker, epidemiologist from South Dakota State University, who is going to be talking to us about how predict, uh, hospitalizations are predicted and also give us a weekly update of what's been going on with COVID-19 in our area and in the world. So Bonnie, what do you have for us today? Hi, thanks, Chelsea. Um, what I thought I'd talk about today is one of the three um, criteria that are on the City of Brookings threshold document. We have a committee that meets once a week and we go over these different indicators. And one of them is looking at whether the health system is able to cope with the resurgence of COVID cases that might come about. And this is just an example. Um, we will provide some data to Jason Merkley at Brookings Health System. And then he will incorporate that into a recommendation. And this particular one says, based on current census, Brookings Health System feels they can handle the lowest of the anticipated numbers, five, but that staffing may be challenging, challenged, limiting the ability to sustain care for the long term with the highest anticipated number, which in this case was an N of 17. So where does that five and 17 come from? I thought it would be good to go talk about that. Um, this is an example of the table that is provided to Jason and discussed among the committee members. And we have here two different um, estimates, one's, well, four estimates, but one of them is based on anticipated admissions based on the number of new cases in the previous week. And the other one is anticipated admissions based on the number of active cases, because we aren't really sure which is most important. Is it the new cases that have come about or the number of active cases that can still get sick and require hospitalization. And those two numbers, especially in November, could be really different when we had a rapid increase in the number of cases. And we calculate um, estimated hospitalizations based on either the overall state hospitalization rate or using age specific hospitalization rates. And I'd like to go through how those two are different. In this example, on December 18th, there had been 108 new cases of COVID in Brookings County. And this was based on numbers that come off the DOH dashboard, and we keep track of those every day. And we added up on December 18th, how many cases had been diagnosed in Brookings County in the previous week. So there were 108 there, and we had 245 active cases of COVID in Brookings County on December 18th. Okay, we also had an overall hospitalization rate for the state of South Dakota of 5.7% on this particular date. So that's gonna be used in a little bit. And we had age specific hospitalization rates as of December 18th. You can figure that out from data based off the dashboard. And then there was an age distribution of cases between December 2nd and December 9th. And this comes from the daily data report that's sent out that is available online on the city website, but we'll go over that as well. Now, this is an example of the age-specific hospitalization rates as of December 18th. And what we do for each age group, we calculate the percent of cases that are hospitalized. And that's done it's, it's from the beginning of time, and it's done as the number of people hospitalized divided by the total number of cases within that age group. So it, for example, in the 60 to 69 age group, there have been 1,105 people hospitalized, 
And there have been 11,048 people within that age range that have been diagnosed with COVID. So when you calculate that out, it comes to 10.1%. So we're gonna use these individual hospitalization rates or these age, we call them age specific because they're specific for those age groups. Later on, when we calculate the expected number of hospitalizations based on age specific rates, but to do the overall hospitalization rate, we just sum up everyone that's ever been hospitalized from COVID. And on December 18th, that was 5,561 people divided by the total number of COVID cases, which was 97,390. And when you calculate that out, 5.7% of the people who have been diagnosed with COVID or have tested positive have been hospitalized. So kind of the middle, but you can see a very age dependent um, effect here with older people, a higher percent of them being hospitalized than the younger people. So if we look at basing it on overall hospitalization rates, what we do is we take that number of new cases in the past seven days, and simply multiply it times that total hospitalization rate of 5.7%. And we come up with an N of six that we expect to be hospitalized in the next week. Or if we base it on number of active cases, we come up with an N of 14. Now, the World Health Organization recommends adding, you know, 20 percent more just to make sure that you have sufficient capacity in the hospitals. And if you add 20 percent more, you come up with these numbers that are in parentheses. As I mentioned, in order to figure out the number of expected hospitalization rate, hospitalizations based on age-specific rates, we need to know a couple things. One of them is the hospitalization rates by age, and the other one is the age distribution of cases in Brookings County. And as I showed previously, we have the hospitalization rates by age. These are the data as of December 18th. But to come up with the Brookings County data, this is not something that's available on the Department of Health dashboard. So this is requested from the Department of Health um, on a pretty much weekly basis. But if you look at the dates along the bottom here, they're not exactly the same. Like we don't get it exactly every seven days. But th there's a couple things that's interesting to note in this slide, even regardless of, of estimating hospitalizations. And this is a slide that is available on the um, City of Brookings website in the daily downloads or weekly downloads. Here, let's just look back here in September. What this is telling you is the age distribution of the cases within Brookings County. And our biggest chunk at that point of, in time was the 20 to 29 year olds. And this is the legend down here showing you what the colors, what the age groups are, but essentially, we're starting down here at the bottom with the youngest. These are zero to nine, 10 to 19, 20 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 49, and on up. And you can see that over time in Brookings County, what has happened is the older ages, more, a higher percent of the total number of cases in Brookings have come from this older age group. So early on, we had younger people being diagnosed with COVID, and now we have about close to 50% of the people that have been diagnosed are 30 years and older, compared to back here, it was about 20%. So there's, there's been a, a big shift in the age distribution. And if you think back on that graph that showed the hospitalization rates by age, those increase with increasing age. 
So back here, we're not going to have very many hospitalizations because most of the people with COVID have been younger. Now it's moving to older people, and that's where we're going to see increases in hospitalizations. But what we have here is describing the increase in the seven days between December 2nd and December 9th. So we have numbers here of how many people in each of these age groups were diagnosed in this time period. There were 159 new cases within Brookings County between December 2nd and December 9th. So that's what these numbers here are showing. And we're gonna use those numbers to predict the age distribution of more recent cases. We're gonna use sort of the age that we're seeing in the most recent Brookings data. These numbers here in this first column are coming from that graph I just showed you. Uh, these are the recent cases by age within Brookings County. And we're calling this column, column A, so that you can see how these things are, are calculated. So if we add up column A and we look at what percent of the population in the most recent Brookings data is in each of the age groups. So here, 17%, this 27 divided by 159 is 17% of the cases are less than 20 years of old, 20 years of age. So these are the, the most recent age distribution of Brookings County. And we take this distribution and apply it to the number of new cases we've seen in the previous week. Because if you remember, these cases are from a previous time, but they're the closest time that we have. To, to the current week. So the current week, we have 108 cases. So we take this 108 and multiply it times 17%, and we say 18.3. That's the estimated number of cases that we would have age 20 or less out of this 108 that we've seen in the, in the last week. So we take that last column and we take the hospitalization rates at the state level, that graph that shows what percent are actually hospitalized, 26% in that older age group, less than 1% in the less than 20 age group. And we simply multiply these two, and this is a percent, so you have to take the decimal out, and we come up with an estimated number of hospitalizations for each age group. And we add this up and we come up with a total of five expected hospitalizations based on the age distribution, the best guess at the age distribution that we have. So this is looking at 108 new cases. Then we redo the whole thing using 234 245 the number of active cases at here so we end up with a larger estimate obviously so this is back to that table that we give to Jason Merkley and this is what we just calculated this five this in a five we add the 20 percent like the World Health Organization recommends and we redo everything with that 245 as our in. So we've come up with a range of possible estimated hospitalizations, five being the lowest and 17 being the highest. So we're gonna give that to Jason and we're gonna say there's somewhere in between five and 17 hospitalizations are what we expect in the next week, you know, depending on which rate we use. So it's just a range. Now, have we done okay based on these predictions? I've just given here the last four weeks. Um, here we have the, when the projection was made and 
It was for the week ending December 4th. And for that week, we had projected between eight and 29 hospitalizations. And what we saw was six hospitalizations and two deaths. So we add these two together being eight. And we say, well, we weren't bad. We were on the low side of the recommendations. Here we have projected between eight and 28. This is, these are actually coming from November numbers, which were quite high. Um, and we projected 11. Here we projected seven to 27, 27 and we observed six, seven. Here we projected between five and 18. You can see these projections are now going down because we're having fewer cases. So we projected between five and 18 and we actually saw nine. So we, we have been using these age specific rates for the last 10 weeks. We've overestimated the number of hospitalizations in one of those weeks and we've been within the range if we include dates, nine of the 10 times. Um, the, the nice thing about using the age specific rates is Brookings County's age distribution is different than the rest of the state. We have a younger population with the university. So if the cases are young compared to the cases in South Dakota, the overall rate will that we come up with will overestimate the number of hospitalizations because if a lot of the cases are young, there's going to be fewer hospitalizations. So if they're older, the overall rate's gonna underestimate. If the Brookings County cases are older than the rest of South Dakota, using that overall state rate will underestimate it because we have an older population, more of them are gonna be hospitalized. So just in summary, estimating the projected number of upcoming hospitalizations for Brookings County helps us to determine whether the hospital, hospital has capacity. You know, it is one of the, the best, uh, it's, it's one of many thresholds that we're using to determine what's going on or get an idea of what's happening in Brookings County, but there are limitations to the data and it is just the best guess that we have. So if you have any questions, you know, you're using like the last week's data. Is that is that generally when hospitalizations happen? Is like a week after infection? Or so hospitalizations usually happen seven to ten days following diagnosis. That's the average. Um, there are quite a bit of limitations when it comes to the data that we're using because you have the data we have access to is the data on the Department of Health dashboard. So the date of diagnosis, we don't actually have. We have the date that a case was posted to the dashboard. We also don't have the actual date of hospitalization. What we have is the date that hospitalizations were reported on the dashboard, which could be up to a week off. And the date of the um, diagnosis of a case can also be off because if you think about back in November, we had delays of up to five days before getting the results back, test results back to a person. So we don't, we are missing that five day as well. So this is analysis actually assumes that the shifts are consistent among the different outcomes between when the dates are diagnosed, when you're hospitalized. So there are a lot of assumptions in these data. So what else do you have for us this week? What has been happening with COVID-19 over the last week in our region, in our state, in the world, and uh, nationwide? I have a couple of different things today. Um, first, I wanted to clarify 
because some of these documents are posted on the city of Brookings website, I wanted to let people know that there are some differences or changes in, in the slides that are updated. Um, there are there were a whole bunch of slides in the presentation and they just kept getting added to you know as new variables came out on the dashboard i added more slides that were being updated you know we started adding the number of people in the icu so we there's a slide on that we have now added a number or a slide on how many people have been vaccinated. So that whole thing became rather large and cumbersome. So I've separated them into two different um, presentations. One of them are just slides that are updated daily. And the other ones are slides that are updated less frequently. And some of the slides are updated weekly, the things like what I just showed with the age distribution of Brookings cases. Also case fatality rates, the numbers in K-12 and higher ed, you know, those sorts of slides are only updated weekly. So they, I've pulled them from that daily update pack and put them in the weekly one. Also, there are slides included in that weekly one of data that are updated only monthly. And those are the new slides that relate to the total deaths in South Dakota over time and by month. So those are a little bit different. As far as Brookings County, again, we're still in substantial spread. If you look over here, these are cases per day. We are going down. We're not quite down to this orange line yet. We have a total of 2,900, a little bit over, um, cases that have been diagnosed, 86 of them this week versus 94 in the previous week. There have been 214 active cases on December 27th compared to 229 last Sunday. There have been 101 people hospitalized. We had four new admissions this week compared to five in the previous week. 29 total deaths. There were five deaths this week compared to no deaths in the previous week. The test positivity still continues to be high. 25% um, if you use the people tested as your denominator versus 8% if you use tests done as your denominator. And 345 people vaccinated, that's been going up, and there is a graph on that in the daily packet. I've also added here rankings. These are the counties with the 10 most populous cities in South Dakota. And I just wanted to show where Brookings is. This is as of December 22nd. We are ranked second one is the best so we have second here um beetle county in the past seven days have had the fewest number of new cases these are all adjusted per population size this is 100,000 population is abbreviated as this 100k um brookings has overall the fewest cases per population size of the 10 counties this is total cases since the beginning of the pandemic. And we also have the lowest total number of deaths per population size um, with say here, Mitchell, Count, Mitchell or Davison County having the highest. Um, down here, I provide the different dates of when mask mandates or resolutions, ordinances, whether they were enforceable or not. So that's kind of, if people would like to look at that, this is in the weekly ranking document that goes out. As far as South Dakota, we have had 97,390 cases, 2,663 2 cases this week, compared to about 3,500 in the previous week. So this has dropped. We have 6,697 active cases as of Sunday. 
and that compares to over 8,000 in the previous Sunday. So again, the active cases are trending downward. 5,561 hospitalizations. This is a lot lower this past week than the previous, 150 versus 237. As of December 27th, there were 274 people hospitalized. 62 of these were in the ICU. And this compares to 345 that were hospitalized the previous Sunday. 1,446 deaths, 500 of these occurred in December. Um, 85 deaths this week compared to 102 in the previous week. And also at the state level, test positivity is high. We've had over 13,000, close to actually 14,000 people vaccinated. And if you look at South Dakota's rankings, if you look at it in terms of testing, we've had the fourth highest percent positive tests in the last seven days. Idaho's number for one. We want this to be low. So you don't wanna be high. So we're at the, the bottom end of that ranking. Um, we've also had the third lowest number of new tests reported in the last seven days per population. We also want this to be high. So testing is, is not doing well, and I'll talk about that in a, at the end of the presentation. In terms of cases, we've had this, we have the 17th lowest in the last seven days, and this is reflecting that downward trend. We are doing much, much better. Back in November, we were ranked as the highest, so now we're, we're getting close to being at the bottom, so that's good. We have the second highest total reported cases. Um, this is because of the, the large peak in November, put both North Dakota and South Dakota up there. Um, but hope, hopefully we stay second. And you know, at the rate we're going with the downward trend, it looks like we'll, we'll do better. In terms of hospitalizations, again, we were ranked first in the country for quite a while. We now are ranked 26th in terms of the highest number of COVID hospitalizations. So that's also very good. In terms of deaths, on the 27th, Sunday morning, we had the highest daily reported deaths in the last seven days of any state. I looked at this just recently and we are not number one anymore. We've dropped, so that's, that's good to know. We do have the fifth highest total reported deaths per population size um, uh, with 167 deaths per 100,000 population. The US overall has a rate of 102. New Jersey is first, they have the highest rate with 210. If you look at the US, things are also trending downwards. Hopefully it continues to trend down after the you know, Christmas holiday. Some of this, whether it's due to lag in reporting due to that four day weekend or an actual decline in cases, um, makes me think it might be a decline in reporting because it's in deaths, we're also seeing it. So I expect this to maybe come back up, but we'll see in the next week or two. 19 million cases, we have dropped a little bit in the previous week. There have been over 339,000 total deaths, and this has dropped slightly in the past week compared to the previous week. And again, whether this is due to that four day weekend, it's not clear. Um, we did reach a milestone this past week with more than um, one in a thousand people having died of COVID in the US in, since the beginning of this pandemic. So where's the US relative to other countries? Out of 168 countries, the U.S. has the ninth highest reported cases in the last seven days and the sixth highest total reported cases. In terms of deaths, we have the 15th highest daily reported deaths in the last seven days 
and the 14th highest total reported deaths per population. So not doing very well ranked globally to other countries. Worldwide, we also see these declines, whether it's again due to Christmas holidays, it's not clear. There are almost 81 million cases. The number this week is about the same as it was slightly less, well, a lot less, but when you look at it per million, it doesn't look as, as much, but it does seem to be down in, the, in this past week. As far as deaths, 1.76 million deaths, 73,000 this week compared to 80,000 in the previous week. So you can see that here with this drop. Um, the travel restrictions have changed slightly. I don't remember what actually, which state went in and out this week, but again, the website's here in case you are traveling for the holidays. So the trends continue to look good, but we had a really long weekend and hopefully everyone was cautious and will continue to be cautious over the new years. And one thing I wanted to mention is that the South Dakota Department of Health has initiated a free at-home testing program. So, and no questions asked if you want to, a test, you can go on here, register for it, it's sent to you. You do a Zoom meeting with someone to show, to make sure you're collecting the sample correctly. You put it in back in it, the container and mail it in and you get your results in a couple days. Um, this is a great way to get tested if you have symptoms or if you've been in contact with someone who had symptoms or someone that tested positive, you can find out you know, whether you're positive even if you might not have symptoms. So it's a great thing to take advantage of. Using it would also help get our test positivity down and increase the number of tests that have been getting done. So uh, a good um, thing to be doing for the Department of Health. That's all, Chelsea. Well, thank you, Bonnie. It's really wonderful to see some of, some good news this week with some downward trends. I hope that that continues through the new year and that we can start the new year with a, a nice start. Um, so continue everyone, continue everything that you're doing. Um, thank you very much. If you have any questions, please email us at the email address listed in the description of this video and we will get those questions answered for you and have a wonderful week. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you, Chelsea.